Hey, what's up guys? So I got another YouTube question that I want to talk about. So this is more of a system design um, question uh, about building a specific feature in a Django app. So this is a question about building an instant messaging feature into, uh, into an app using Python or into a Django app using Python. And I just want to read out the question. So, so this question is from random, ha 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 ha, hi random. So hi Dan, I hope you're doing great. Yes, I am, thank you very much. Um, I love watching your videos. I am a beginner Python programmer and I am very curious about this ubiquitous, actually, how do you pronounce that word? Ubiquitous? I guess, I think it's ubiquitous. Somebody call, please call me out in the comments. Um, that is instant messaging where the users of the application can send text messages to each other. How would you implement such a feature using the Django framework in Python? Do I need to be an expert if I need to scale such an applica application to suppose around 10,000 users? Okay, so just a quick rundown in terms of how would I implement this and add this feature to an existing Django app? Well, what does it mean to send a message from one user to another? Um, how, what, what would this look like? You know, what do you want this to look like from the perspective of your user? Do you want them to log into the application? You know, suppose I send you a message in this application. I type it, probably type it into some kind of form, hit the send button, and uh, when you log into the app or, you know, you're gonna see maybe a little notification uh, up there, like a little link that says, hey, there's one new um, message available here for random from Dan. And you click on it and you see the text content and you maybe get the same message box or form back where you can reply uh, to me. That, I feel like that would be like a basic use case for this. Now, maybe that you would want some other features like email notifications for pending messages or um, maybe you want uh, some kind of web push notification where people can get little, these little pop-ups on their phone or, or in their browser window when there's a new message. And um, we can talk about that, but uh, I'm, I'm mainly gonna focus on this like central use case of, okay, you know, you enter a message and the other user sees it the next time they log into the app. Well, so how would I do this? Um, well, in terms of the, the user interface, you need some kind of form where people can pick uh, another um, pick, a, pick a user they want to send a message to and then have a form where they can enter text. And you can make that more or less complicated. You know, it, maybe we're just allowing like very simple uh, plain ASCII text messages or maybe you want to allow rich text uh, messages where people can, you know, use some formatting tools like make things bold or, or um, you know, use emoji and, and stuff like that. And uh, the question is like, do we need that? So, you know, I, I always like approaching these things from what is sort of the bare bones uh, implementation that you can start out with and then grow it from there. So I'm just gonna assume we have a simple text box. This is just a plain um, uh, a text field. We can just enter, you know, plain ASCII text or Unicode text, you know, I'm a, I, I mean, without rich text formatting or any kind of HTML formatting. So just text and, you know, stored in Unicode so that it will support all kinds of uh, different characters and uh, we can use this application internationally. So, you know, it would just whip up or create a standard Django form for that. I mean, you know, I'm not gonna do this now, like code this out. This is more like a system design question, but essentially you're gonna have a model for these messages and they're gonna have a from and a to field that are gonna um, link that model to, to user accounts. So I, I know who's writing a message to who. And it will also have a body field or a text field um, on that model where we store the text content. Now, when I send a message to you, we're gonna create an instance of that model and we're just gonna store that. Then when whenever you log in or whenever your user account requests a page and that's getting, that's getting rendered and sent out to your, to your browser, we're just gonna check if there's a new message for your user, you know, in the to field. So uh, we're just gonna run a database query. Just, we're gonna, just gonna do it every single time you request a page. And um, if there is a pending message that you haven't read yet, so actually we probably want, at this point wanna add some kind of flag on that message where you can mark a message as delivered or read. So we can, we know when to display this. So we're just gonna, but for the base case, you know, for the absolute like basic, um, basic implementation here. We'll just look if there's any messages available for you and then maybe show you a little counter or show you some link when you, uh, where you can view that message. 
So that's probably the simplest implementation that I could think of. You know, we can add a new message and then, and then you, you will see that and you can click on that. And then we need another, you know, we need another view for that to be able to see that message. Maybe we could just display it in the same edit view in the beginning, just, you know, just to, have to get something running very quickly. But, you know, we probably want to grow it from there. So maybe one of the next things we want to do, uh, maybe we want like a headline and the, a body text, you know, to make this more similar to email or, um, Maybe we want, uh, we want real time uh, updates so that two people can chat back and forth. It would be more like a chat system and not so much um, just a simple, you know, email based or, or you know, uh, modeled after an email exchange, more, more like a, an asynchronous system. Like you write something, uh, I'll get it a little bit later and I write back, but we're not both sitting in front of a computer and sending, sending each other these things. So you could make the UI nicer for that, right? But like the absolute base case would just be, hey, we have a model in the database um, and, or we have a model in Django and then we use that to persist that information to the database. And uh, we're just going to store a from to maybe uh, has this message been delivered or read flag. And uh, we're also going to add uh, a text field. And, and that's, that's essentially it for, for the absolute basic implementation. Now I want to talk a little bit about um, the need to scale such an application. And I think here, you know, when you're talking about 1000 users, um, for estimating any kind or, you know, making any kind of uh, performance estima estimations, I think it's important to know what, what time frame we're looking at. You know, what's, how often is, is this app seeing, like if this app has 10,000 registered users, how active are they? You know, are they, are there 10,000 concurrent users? That is going to be more challenging than just having 10,000 users in general. They're all sort of roughly distributed, you know, in the world or let's say Northern America around a couple of time zones. And you only ever have maybe 10, 10 of them on the site at the same time. In that case, it's not going to hurt you at all just to run that query every single time one of the users requests a page and, uh, and just to display that message counter, you know, just display like, hey, you have a new message uh, counter here. But as the traffic increases, you probably want to think about some way of, of caching. So maybe we're not going to check every single page view, but maybe we're going to only check once a minute. Again, you know, it's not going to make a huge difference to our users. It might, depending on the requirements and kind of how, what you want the user experience to be like, but it's going to reduce the amount of queries that we're going to have to run to do this. And there, there are strategies like that you can apply. Um, the, you know, the, 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 the more load your application gets, but just based on, on that number, you know, 10,000 users, um, I wouldn't worry about too much about optimizing the performance for that. You could probably get away with some basic, um, some basic caching and, you know, only updating that message count, like every, every minute, every 30 seconds, or whenever there's actually room to do it, you know, maybe it's like a permanent background task that just go through all the users and checks if there's a new message or even better, it could be done in a way where when, when somebody sends a new message, the act of, of sending that message will actually go and update the cache so that the next time that user logs in uh, or, or requests a page, the recipient of that message requests a page, they're going to get that little, um, that little updated uh, message counter. And that way, you know, we, we, um, still have to query the cache, but we're only ever going to hit the, the database when the database, when the cache gets invalidated or when um, we post a new message and we, or we actually need to fetch it. So, you know, there's essentially, I would start it with a dead simple, uh, simple implementation there. And um, by dead simple, I mean, this is already pretty complicated if you're, um, if you're saying you're a beginner, right? Like I, I touched on a, a number of things and, and I would actually love to provide some kind of code sample uh, for this in the future. But um, for the very, very basic implementation, you don't have to go too crazy and I wouldn't really worry about um, performance. It gets, things get a lot more complicated when you're factoring in other deliver mechanisms like email. You know, when is that email gonna get delivered? Um, and uh, you probably don't wanna do that in the, um, in the handler for that particular web request, you know, the function that that executes before the response is generated or that actually generates the response. But you probably want to offload that to some background task that just goes, hey, now I need to send an email and then handles that because you don't want to be blocking on that email uh, sending. 
And, and it's the same with web push, for example. Again, you probably wanna build out some asynchronous system there that delivers that in the background or offload that to, to some third-party integration as well, where maybe you're not supporting web push directly, but maybe you're going through another system like, um, like I'm using push crew on my own site and they handle most of that and I can just, you know, um, it's, a, it's a different system really, like it's a different use case, but you know, there's a couple of other options you can use there. So, but just in terms of the basic implementation, um, this is what I, what I would do, you know, keep it straightforward, keep it simple. Don't worry about too much about scaling this. Um, this is, it, it to me doesn't seem like it would really dramatically um, in, increase the load on your site if it did a system like that and adding that one query, you know, it's just everything is keyed by um, by the user ID there, are those messages. So you're gonna have, you know, the database is gonna have a really easy time finding that. Um, all right, I hope this was helpful. This is more, um, you know, I, I feel like I should have shown you some actual like diagrams and maybe written some code to show you this. But this is kind of the high level approach that I would pick here. And uh, it would be great to see when you implement that implication, uh, application and, and uh, just, just let me know about your progress there. All right, best of luck with that and happy Pythoning.